Okay, guys, another uh, interesting day in the stock market. Uh, been an interesting week. Been actually an interesting four or five weeks to be to be truthful with you because we've seen consistent gains come out of this market. We've seen rallies that just defied expectations or, or probabilities. And uh, today we got the market up again. It was a 0.3% on the S&P, 0.3% on the NASDAQ, and 0.7% on the Russell 2000. So a lot of more of your strength was concentrated with the small caps versus the large cap. Breath was okay. Uh, the VIX is dying off. I mean, we're looking at like nine straight weeks, potentially, if it just finishes down tomorrow, if any amount, it'll be down for a ninth straight week. So it's just really been a um, exceptional period for the market. In fact, I would probably say that in the 30 years that I've been trading and investing, this is probably one of the most weirdest time frames that I think I've ever traded. In. And, and uh, that's saying a lot because I feel like I've seen a lot in this market. Um over the years. I mean, I've seen some crazy things from the fat finger crash back in what, May 2010 um, to, to just a whole host of, you know, crazy stuff, you know, dot com boom, dot com bust. Then you had the, the COVID recession or the COVID recession was a while before, after that, but then you had the great recession, the financial recession uh, of 2008. So, I mean, just a number of things, but this dead cap bounce rally is just, uh, it's just of an, another magnitude really, because what we have here is uh, the whole mantra of don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed all these years for 13 years. Really, you can even go back to the 80s when Greenspan uh, was, uh, you know, introduced the, the, the concept of the Fed put or what we call the Fed put. But you now have the market just saying, we don't believe you. We don't think that you're willing to do it. So we're going to keep rallying the stocks because we think that you don't have the the audacity to keep raising rates in the face of inflation. So we're just going to keep on buying. And um, retail has jumped into that. I don't know if so much Wall Street is behind it as much as retail per se. Um, re uh, Wall Street has about 100, and at least with the hedge funds, there's about $107 billion of uh, short positions out there. So yeah, maybe that gets squeezed and we go even higher. Maybe we just go right back up to all-time highs. But it doesn't take away from the fact that this is right up there with the craziness of what we've seen this past couple of years in the mean stocks. I mean, the fact that the market's doing this, the fact that Apple is down like 1% on the year, 1%, that's all it's down, is uh, of just otherworldly because their earnings are not doing better. Their earnings are actually decelerated. So I think their earnings are about 7% down year over year. So Apple's not necessarily doing better yet. We're trading as if they're expanding uh, and, and doing better. So it's it's just really a, a far out thing. And, and with Apple, you can't get a market to sell off if Apple doesn't follow. It's $3 trillion. That's 7% of the S&P 500, 17% of the NASDAQ. And it's twice as big as the energy sector. This is a $3 trillion company. So if you can't get it to sell off and it's acting like uh, there's a guy in our um, my chat room in the trading block. He goes by the name Checker. He says, basically, Apple is a money market fund. And it's true. Everybody, whenever they get nervous, they go to Apple. What happens when everybody goes to Apple? The market goes up because it has such an influence. So it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like we get scared. We go into Apple. Apple goes up. Market goes up. So um, there's really no fear in this market right now. Nobody's really going to cash. There is always this like rotation into something else. But the constant theme throughout it all, though, has been Apple. And uh, unless Apple goes down, the, this market really can't do too much to um, to the downside. I mean, every day it seems like the app Apple is going higher. It's saving the Nasdaq. I mean, Nasdaq was down one one point two percent yesterday. Nasdaq was up, or the Apple was up about I can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it was like a 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7 percent on the day. Had Apple followed the Nasdaq, I mean, you're looking at a two two to two and a half percent down day probably for the Nasdaq. So. Really just some phenomenal um, developments in the market as a whole. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go go over a little bit more on the Fed stuff going on here with the market calling its bluff. We're going to go through the SPY. We're going to go through uh, the NASDAQ. We're going to go through the Russells, the VIX, some energy charts, the dollar. Um, then we're going to cover your stocks here. So make sure that you're posting um, your stocks down in the comments or uh, on the on the side, whatever it is that you guys are communicating on. Uh, but yeah, post post the stocks that you want me to cover, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. I, I see your comments. So post them there and then we'll get to those at after I finish all my other stuff. And we'll just sit here and go through some charts. I always find some really good stuff that you guys talk about and what you're looking at that might not always hit my scans. So I'm always excited about that. Also, what am I drinking? I'm drinking 
you guys may have remember when I talked about this on the podcast a while ago. Smooth Ambler contradiction. I don't know if you guys can see that um, very well or not, but it's not the best stuff, honestly. I'm not really a fan of it. It's uh, um, 46% alcohol. That makes it, what, 92 proof? But it's all right. It's got this, like, licorice taste. I wouldn't say it has the best finish to it, but whatever. It needs to get drunk and get off the shelf, probably. It's also made by the same people who make Old Scout. Felt that little sip. All right, let's go ahead. I don't know what why my autofocus is kind of going nuts here a little bit, so disregard that. But let's go and look at these charts here. There we go. Check that out. A little alternate view. Um, Spy. What are we looking at here, guys? First off, you got this 200-day moving average. And what do you see there? You see that price cannot seem to really break through that price level right there. So it's struggling with that. Um, it hasn't tested it again since Tuesday. But it wouldn't surprise me if we gapped higher tomorrow and tried to test it. I think ultimately if we break through this, it's going to be with a gap higher. It'll just completely gap above it and disregard ever testing it. You also have a declining trend line. So that's also going to be one of the things that probably needs a gap above as well. This declining trend line pretty much goes hand in hand with this 200 day moving average. It's pretty much converged right on the top of it there. See that? So can it break through the 200 day moving average? Can it break through this declining trend line? This is the trend line that goes all the way back up to when the market peaked in early January. So that's really the number, number one thing that I'm watching there, those two elements. Now, I've actually been trying to short the market here and there. It hasn't been really of any success. I closed out SPEXU today. That was a 3X ETF of, um, of the S&P 500. So inverse ETF. I think I got maybe up 2% on that trade and I closed it out today for like a half percent. Again, nothing, nothing spectacular. Maybe a third of a percent actually is what I think it was. But nothing spectacular at all. I just, I'm, I'm spinning my wheels here. Market's up six out of the last seven days. My my play on it really is, and I'm, I'll be willing to play it again tomorrow, but we need to see a little bit more action out of it, but out of this market to the downside. But what I was playing was simply that, okay, risk is, okay, I'll be stopped out if it breaks above this rising trend line above the 200-day moving average. If it doesn't do that, then I want to, you know, benefit from it, you know, selling off and possibly even going back down to the June lows ultimately. But I would take probably 408 on, on spot and be a happy camper about that. So that's really, that's the reward to risk ratio that I'm, that I'm targeting there. There's, there's a much better reward risk ratio of trying to play a fade off of this decline trend line, especially considering how overbought we are. And when I talk about over how overbought we are, I mean, look at this right now. We're at 77. I mean, this is the highest that we've been since 2020. So, or actually beginning end of 2020. So it, this is kind of like an incredible rally. We've seen no kind of a pullback to date. So we're at those levels where we should start seeing a pullback. Problem is we have it. So going back, SPY, that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to use the overbought conditions to try to fade this market off of a key, two key resistance levels. Qs are a little different, though, because it's actually broken through some major resistance. However, it hasn't even got close to testing this 200-day moving average yet. So that's about what about three percent away still um very possible that it tests it next week if this rally continues however this is the other thing that i'm really watching too is this rising trend line off of the june lows we've become very much detached off of it after testing it three separate times so it would seem to me that if we do get a pullback we would probably drop back below this declining trend line and back down to this rising trend line reason why i'm not getting overly bullish here on this market. Well, I'm not saying, hey, oh yeah, we should definitely be buying buying this market rally is because for one, the NASDAQ's like 20% off of the lows or 20 plus percent. The other thing is, is that the reward to risk is not there. So I'm not like completely against it. I mean, we got a little bit of a bull flag pattern that it's formed here. And so that's starting to form over the last three days. So the scenario could be that tomorrow we end up breaking out of this bull flag and the market takes it right up to that 200 day moving average. But Ultimately, I really do think that this market is in for like a horrible 
realization here. I think the market is way ahead of itself here. And they're they're really discounting the fact that the market may actually have or that the Fed may actually have the resolve to continue raising rates until they fight inflation. I mean, I think the most optimistic outlook is that inflation will return to normal in 18 months. That's like 2% or whatever. Do you know like the kind of damage that's going to do to the pricing mechanisms in this country within just 18 months? We've already gone through it for the past year. And you're talking about another 18 months and inflation reports, the CPI, they're, they're pretty much grossly understating um, the costs of everything right now. I mean, I, I go get my propane tank filled up at some kind of like uh, vending machine at a Walmart discount store, right? A month ago, it was like $14.99. Now it's 20 bucks to, to fill up a propane tank. And uh, that's that's just like within one month, pro, uh, propane jumping 33%. So, um, you know, you'll be paying 13, 14 bucks for a burrito bowl probably at Chipotle's within the next 18 months if that trend continues, which I don't know about you, but I think there's a lot of people out there that cannot afford that kind. They can't afford the costs going up that high. And so it will have an effect. It will put us into a recession. And um, I don't really think at this point there's a way around it. I think the Fed is really trying to like soft pedal their way out of this whole mess. But in the end, they're in a huge bind here. So you got the cues here. You got the cues. They're nice bull flag. Maybe it breaks out. Maybe you can take advantage of a couple of uh, quick short term positions here to the long side. But ultimately, I do think this thing comes back down. I think the Fed is going to, or I think the market's eventually going to pull the rug on all these, these FOMO chasers are going to get taken out and uh, they're probably going to be losing twice. And when I mean that is like, they probably got out the first time much lower than where they got back in it. And then the market's going to retrace all those and they're going to lose twice at the same price level. So it's going to suck for them, but can't do anything about that. Um, IWM, this will be the last index chart that we look at. And we'll look at the volatility and we'll look at a couple of uh, sectors too. Um, IWM, this is this crazy, I don't know if you guys remember, I used to talk about this channel that IWM was in for the longest time. I mean, this was like, this market, or this index could not break out of this channel. There's a sideways channel that went from like the beginning of 2021, lasted until the end of 2021. Then it broke down. But now we're getting pretty close to wanting to test this again. We're also trying to break through that 200 day moving average again. So like, like the spy IWM is trying to push through that 200 day moving average. Q's have not done that yet. If it does that, then you got this massive resistance level. Which I have a low confidence level that it can actually push through that without, you know, seeing a significant selling. So that that's really all I have to say about that NASDAQ. I mean, it's, it's, it's parabolic over the past month, no doubt going back to the mid June straight up guys. I mean, that's a steep run right there. Now, let's look at energy sector here. And this is this is something that's kind of getting interesting. Nobody's really talking about this stuff. Nobody's talking about the fact that we're seeing a lot of commodities starting to creep up, things that hurt the economy, things that cause inflation. We're also seeing the dollar creep back up again. We're seeing um we're seeing just a lot of things. The the 10 year, it's starting to creep back up again. So XLE, you got a cup and handle pattern right here. That's a very bullish pattern. So right off the 200 day moving average, you got your cup and then you got the handle right here. It handles a little bit smaller than the cup, right? So look at this. We're on the verge of a breakout in energy. That right there should take us right back up to those all-time highs. So you got that with energy. Then look at UUP. This was a source of, of a lot of heartache for the market here throughout this year. It led the market to sell off quite a bit. Guess what? We're marching right back up to these highs again. And so... The last six days been very much unnoticed by the market, but you got a bull flag breakout here, folks. Look at that. Can't draw it any better than that. So bull market break, uh, bull flag breakout to the upside. That should be a concern as well. You take TNX. This is your uh, 10 year treasury yield. What has that been doing for most of August? It's just steadily creeping higher, guys. So look at this. Broke that downtrend. That's even a bull flag, right? So keep an eye on these things because the market's discounting. Market's kind of choosing to ignore it right now. But uh, I don't think it'll be able to do it for much longer if this these trends across the board keep up. So let's um, try to think if I had anything else to talk to you guys again. Not too much. Really, really what we're seeing here unfold is, is the essence of the market simply not taking the Fed serious. 
they don't think that they're willing to do it. And, and for good reason, 2018, they bailed out. They got, they got, they chickened out, they tucked tail and they ran. They were cutting rates in 2018. They were tapering market had a taper tantrum sold off big time within a matter of three months. Fed's like, Oh, we're done raising rates. We're going to start cutting them again. So, um, that that really threw through the market for a loop market bounced put in a bottom and kept growing this time around though market hasn't indicated any such thing so we're really going out on a limb here thinking that the market's actually done raising rates okay let's look at some, some stuff here we've got a quiet crowd today so i don't even know if this is going to be that long but we'll we'll go as long as you guys are here for so i o n q Sub ten dollar stock. Let's see. Uh, looks like you got a basing pattern. That has formed pretty well here. Um, maybe I, I would expect that it probably will want to try to close this gap right here. This is the gap from Tuesday. I would be very weary if it breaks below the opening price from August 16th, that it might not, that it might not uh, stop and that it'll probably try to break the lows from that day, which would be about 708. And then ultimately come back down and fill the gap um, that was created on Tuesday. And that would be at about 650. So keep an eye out for that. Basing pattern though. I mean, that looks good. The breakout, you know, pretty, pretty strong. It was a huge gap up, but it needs that follow through. And right now the last two days, that doesn't look too good. In fact, that's a bearish engulfing candle pattern right there the last two days. Usually the bearish engulfing candle pattern, if I remember correctly, it's a um, it's a green candle followed by a huge red candle, but it's kind of the same thing though, even though that this first candle is red. INTC Intel. So I mean, if you look at SMH, I mean this thing's been this thing's been rocking, right? We on six straight, yeah, six straight weeks here, trying to make it a seventh here. Um, definitely not a bad chart here. I mean, we're seeing a lot of. Uh, Inverse head and shoulders in the um, semiconductors. So, and by we, I mean me. I'm just a one man show, guys. Um, so, INTC. You ever notice that though? A lot of people are like, oh, we at X company, we believe that we're going to see, and there's like one person running the show. It's like me, but I mean, I, at least I, I say it's one person running the show, but all these people try to act like they're these large firms and stuff, and it's just one person. Um, let's see here. I'm just looking at this Intel chart. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. What is the story that it's trying to tell us here? So you do have like this downward channel here in Intel. That's to be respected. It's just hit the bottom of the channel too, quite surprisingly. Uh, hit the bottom of that channel. Now it's starting to perk up a little bit, but check this out. If this is the, if the market truly has reached a bottom, Intel could be a good value. It even has a good dividend too. Um, I think what is it? Dividend like two or th like I think it's like three, three, four percent. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but uh, double check. Got a gap fill right here that needs to take place. I'm gonna add this one to the watch list here, man. This is uh, definitely one worth watching here. Good job. So breaks out right here in the short term. Then it has this decline resistance as well. This goes back to what the March highs it needs to break through that too. So you want to keep an eye on it. You can't really wait for it to break through that because then your reward to risk ratio is just going to be more than 10%. So for me, I would probably play it right here, 3670, 3666. And then, okay, if it starts to struggle at the 3790 level, I, I bail out. But you can break through that, then you set up for a nice uh, run, maybe up to 39 to fill this gap. Good stuff. All right, I'm seeing some of you guys come in here now. Thoughts on Zoom earnings next Monday. First of all, um, when it comes to earnings, be careful with earnings, especially a company like Zoom. I mean, if you're wrong, how bad do you stand to be wrong? Probably a lot. Okay, if you're right, you, you, you'll you probably make a lot, right? You, it, for me personally, and I'm talking just from experience here, it's not worth playing earnings. It just really isn't. It doesn't matter how optimistic you are. If you're wrong, it could be your defining or even portfolio defining. You really don't want either one of those. So um, 
for me personally, I sell out before we ever get to earnings on any of my swing trades. Not worth it for me. But uh, we'll look at it still, though. Let's look at it. I had to get that in. All right. INTC. Oh, well, <laughs> not INTC. Zoom. Now, we talking about Z uh, Zoom. Like, let me just see what we're talking about here. I don't know if he's talking about Zoom or Z uh, Z O O M, the stock itself. But we'll do both of them, whatever. If you're in the comments, so let me know and I can switch over to that. But Zoom, ZM, the, you know, the teleconferencing stuff. This one has been in a basing pattern going back to March. So it really hasn't sold off like we saw March through June, like the rest of the market did. This one instead just has traded sideways for the most part. Zoom, okay, so I'm on the right one. Now, recent, recent days here, though, I mean, it broke below this declining trend line. So that, or not decline, but ascending trend line. So you have this trend line off of the May lows. It's broken that. So in the same note, you can say we got a little bit of a bearish candle or a bearish flag pattern going on here. So despite the fact that we're in a basing pattern, it's breaking below this rising trend line. So really, until something drastically changes, it it nullifies the action and in, in, uh, that we were getting from a basing standpoint. And really, the focus now is on this bear flag pattern because it's breaking to the downside. So yeah, I, I had this on my bearish watch list. I've kept it on my bearish watch list. I think it's bearish. Uh, yes, there was a basing pattern that's forming. It still may be, but for now, in the very short term, we're looking at it over the last three months. It definitely trends more towards the bearish side with this bear flag break. So, I mean, it's and it's in a massive downward decline, right? So, one of the few stocks that has not broken that massive descending trend line. This one is making a bear flag and possibly looking at challenging those may lows if this momentum continues on it. Let's look at some BA here. So I know that probably wasn't what um, Lou was looking for on ZM. I've just, you know, be cautious of that bear bear flag that's uh, pushed to the downside. Be careful with earnings too, because bear earnings are unpredictable. You can't predict how it's going to turn. Maybe it'll turn out good. Maybe it won't. But if it turns out bad, it's it it can be disastrous. All right, Alex on BA daily chart. If I get in now, my stop loss would be one sixty three. All right, man, he's he's got this trade planned out. So I'm trying to figure out. Where did you put in that stop loss at 163? So, okay. So probably using it right below here. That's not bad. You could also play this gap fill as a stop loss as well. Boeing is not the worst stock in the world. The, the problem with Boeing is, and, and I'm I'm loosening up a little bit. It used to be on my do not trade list just because when I traded in the past, awful things kept happening and there was just such headline risk associated with it that I didn't want anything to do with it. But now, I mean, it, it seems like it's making a little bit more of a turnaround there. I mean, fingers crossed. Um, let's see here. I don't even know if that's worth paying attention to. Um, it's not bad. You just got a lot of chop here over the last month of August. It just hasn't gone anywhere outside of that opening day of August where it gapped way up. It hasn't done anything much besides that. So it's traded sideways. Yeah, if you get in right now, the, the reward or risk is good. I mean, you could say that there's a move to 194, but there's not really that edge that sets it apart of saying, okay, it's more likely to go for the reward than the risk part of the trade. So that's the hard part of it. Um, it's not the worst. I mean, there is some resistance here too, just that I'm catching right now. May have some right there at around, what is that, 183-ish. So keep that in mind. We got Aaron, Aaron Sunday, MOH, please. You guys been keeping up with the Bed Bath & Beyond crap? Holy snikes. I just got to look. <laughs> I, I, know, I know there's probably some pain and suffering there, but guys, it's like how many times you got to learn this stuff? I'm not talking to the audience. I think the audience is smarter than this, but uh, I'm talking about the, the, the crazies that are just piling in. When is this ever ended good for people? And I'll get back to MOH here in a second, but it just I didn't want to forget about this stock. I mean, these people are like, oh, it's going to 30, it's going to 50, it's going to 60, whatever. I mean, this is this is like bonanza right here. I mean, 
they went up to 3006 last time in March. This time it goes to 30 flat uh, this time. But and everybody talks about Ryan Cohen this, Ryan Cohen that, and he's like somehow walks on water or something crazy. Dude, the, he's like every CEO. He's going to be out for himself, man. He doesn't care about the individual traders. He's just he's capitalizing on it. He's a capitalist. He's saying, oh, wow, all these people want to prop up a crap company? Sure. So he's going to he's gonna monetize it. He knows that if word gets out that he bought into it, everybody else is going to get into it. And as they're getting into it, he's going to be getting out. So 12.38, man. Is that, a, is that an after hours move? Oh, yeah, that's an after hours move. Man, what was the news on that sucker to drop it another 33% after hours? What is it? Does anybody know? I, I don't want to do it while I'm on the live stream here, but that is crazy. All right. MOH, Aaron, I'm sorry about that. This is, this is an odd one. I'm trying to really find the edge on this one, too. I mean, incredible rally. Okay, maybe maybe we got something here. Watch this rising trend line here off of the June lows. I don't know why that didn't stand out to me initially, but. Let's see here. MOH. 325 is probably like a good bounce area here. I would say if it breaks this trend line on a closing basis there is no reason to be in it but as long as it holds this rising trend line it's pretty good um man that's a steep that is a steep rally though i mean but that's that's happening across the board with a ton of stocks right now is are, are these steep rallies can i look at evgo oh wait wait a second scott scott you got killed on tbh got in at nine something and out at 22 okay oh you killed it boy i read that one wrong i thought you said i got killed but no he said he killed it on that's good man you made what is geez like 133 percent on that trade um that's really good no and it's not that there isn't people that are making money on it but let's say let's say zach or uh, scott sorry about that scott getting in at it you know he has like a large position and now he's doubled that large position. Now he's selling it to people who are just getting into it. Good for Scott. But there is a lot of bag holders that are coming in to get out of that position, to, to help him liquidate that position. They're just now getting into it. So it's creating a whole slew of new bag holders. So good for Scott, man. I'm glad for him. I'm happy. But the majority of people are going to lose on these things just because like it takes a lot of bag holders to liquidate a stock to, especially if you've made like one or 200% on it. I think I was reading something today. Somebody made like $110 million off of the trade. And it was like a teenager, like a high schooler. Can you imagine how many bag holders had to liquidate that position for him? I mean, it took a lot. Okay. Back to Mike Sanders here. EVGO. I am trend line going back to 2021. That's for sure. Okay. That's like the long-term view. Is there some resistance here to be mindful of? Yes. You got some resistance here right there. That goes back to about what? 13, 1370, 1380. Rising trend line. That's on the daily. Tighten that up a little bit here. Okay, so it's, it's come disattached off of this rising trend line. I would look for the potential for there to be a pullback to 936, especially if this market starts to sell off a little bit more in the days ahead. That becomes a possibility. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good as long as it holds this rising trend line, breaks the rising trend line. I don't want to be in it any longer. It's seeing that some of the same kind of patterns pop up across multiple stocks. Lucid. Oh, Lucid. Let's see here. If I can get it to pop up here. Oh, that's always fun. One thing about... Uh, I always have a backup chart for these things, so don't worry about that. Um, and I bet you, did it... Nope, it hasn't snuck back up yet. Um one of the things about being living in Florida is the summer times you get crazy, crazy thunderstorms. There's one going on right now. I, I doubt you guys can hear it, uh, but 
LCID. Rising trend line off of the uh, May lows, that one's broken here. So this was another one that I've had on my bearish watch list here. You can get all that. That's all through um, swing. You can go to swingtradingthestockmarket.com or you can just click join down below if you're on, watching on YouTube. That has it as well. But yeah, this is starting to break to the downside. It's kind of doing it by default. It's not like a, a strong break. It was a strong break right here, but since then it's just kind of traded right underneath this this broken you can call it like a bear flag pattern for the most part so big thing here is okay does it break these lows here that were established on august 9th and then does it go back down to the uh may lows that would be pretty horrific for long-term holders that'd be like another 33 percent move that that's kind of like a bed bath and beyond after hours kind of a thing um but yeah it, it, it's just not a good chart This is an interesting question. Please answer. I need to know. Thank you. I don't know what his question is. <laughs> Tyrone, you got to help me out here. What's the question? I don't see a question from Tyrone. All right. Well, can't help you there, Tyrone, if you don't actually give me a question to answer. So, Alex, how far do you go back to find trends for swing trades and day trends? Uh, day trend. I mean, if you're a day trader, you're really looking for the most part, uh, maybe like really short term on the daily. But for the most part, you're looking for patterns to develop intraday. On swing trades, I'll go back. I'll go back like a year or so. I mean, sometimes I'll scroll back further. I feel like the longer you go back, the more difficult it is to get an immediate reaction out of the stock because it's been developing so long. Like if you find a like an inverse head and shoulders pattern that goes back five years or let's say ten years, right? And it's starting to break out. Oh, that's great that it's breaking out, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make this gigantic leap forward. So um, it may just like consolidate a lot because it took so long to form the pattern. But if you if you have like an inverse head and shoulders pattern that formed over like six to eight months, you may see a much uh, better um, reaction once it does break that neckline. So and that goes with like really any pattern. So like a, a if you had a bull flag pattern that was lasting for the past four or five months. Um, versus like instead of just like one day I, I or not one day, but like a couple of weeks, I think that couple of weeks might see a, a quicker pop to the upside. But the long term trend line or the long term pattern might see a much bigger move over a longer period of time. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys. Um, good stuff today. I, I, I enjoyed going back and forth with you guys hearing hearing what you guys were looking at. Um, Definitely an interesting market here. I, I do think the market has not so much that the market has it wrong. I think for the participants in the market pretty much have it wrong. I think too many people are really banking on the fact that the Fed is going to uh, back off and they're going to they're they're, they're thinking that the, the Fed's buff. And I don't think that they are. They've shown no reason to buff. In fact, Bullard was out there today and the market actually responded bullishly. I'm like, guys, he just said he, he favors a three quarters of an interest rate hike. Like, what are you guys thinking? But the market keeps pushing higher. A lot of that's due to just a lack of volume. There's no volume in this market right now. And so when you have that lack of volume, it's very much easier to push prices back up. I wasn't, like I said, I was an SPXU today. I got out of it just because I couldn't justify holding it any longer. I had a small profit, but that didn't really mean much to me. What I would have liked to have done to be able to hold it, but there was no justification for it. So I need to see how the market performs going into tomorrow and the days ahead and see uh, where that takes us. So. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, check out down below the join button. I'm doing a lot of additional videos each and every day, like a couple of them at least. Um, really good videos providing different uh, looks on different stocks. So check that out. And uh, thank you guys. Have a good one. Uh, God bless you all.